Howdy and welcome back to my channel, or just howdy if you're new. Because this video was getting awfully long, today I thought I would take you guys through the process of me drafting and fitting a corset that sort of melds together Victorian construction methods with a silhouette that looks a little bit less jarring to the modern eye, but one that would also be comfortable and easy for me to wear. Firstly, because I just, I need something that will work under my petticoats and my hoop skirts and my bustles for history bounding purposes, and also just because I enjoy mad sciencing together historical dress in the modern eye. But before I got started on any actual dress making, I had to start with a pattern, and I drafted this one on my dress form, but I didn't show the process as it wasn't really that helpful. But I did generally follow cues from the patterns of corsets that I've seen from the era, such as in the Symington collection. This was out of a combination of the bust line, as well as the tummy line. Modern corseteers, and in fact the modern silhouette and the modern eye, would generally prefer a more flattened tummy, whereas the Victorians really liked more of a sloped tummy line, which contrasted with the slope from the bust to the waist and then out on the tummy, and thought it looked very attractive and matronly, as well as making that curve look a lot more curved and the shape look a lot more dramatic. Yes, around 1900, the S-Bend silhouette came into effect. But on the S-Bend corsets of the time, we see a very low bust line, not what one would typically expect to see today. And they were typically made to be heavily padded at the small of the back in order to create that very graceful S-Bent silhouette with the very round rump. So if I had worked with an extant pattern, I essentially would have had to entirely redraft it anyway in order to accommodate those changes, and it basically wouldn't have been that historical pattern anymore. I also just like drafting things, so I drafted one myself. By the way, the fabric I'm using here is just a home decor cotton. They tend to be quite stiff and have a little bit of stretch on the bias, which is what you typically want with this sort of thing. And it was cheap, so I decided to use that for my mock-ups instead of wasting a bunch of yards of my nice, expensive herringbone twill, so I just bought this one on sale for $6.99 a yard. For the very first try-on, I didn't bother boning my corset at all. I actually just went through and laced everything up and pinned it together in the front because I mostly just wanted to make sure that it physically fit around my person and hadn't adjusted for the gap yet so it would eat meet evenly in the back and I wanted to make sure that I that everything was in the right place and there were no major structural issues, which I did have. I had to entirely, essentially, redraft panels four and five to agree with each other as my curve between the two just looked really wonky and stupid. Also, a life hack is to use eyelet tape in the back of your corsets in order to do your try-ons if it's not supposed to be a very, very cinching corset. If you're just making a casual type of corset, it's usually enough for things like a fitting.
I didn't actually redo the entire thing for when I made the second mock-up. I just sort of did my best to tear off and then reinstall the other two after I had redone my second to last panel and cut down my last panel, the lacing panel, significantly. And after that, it was finally time to start actually doing some boning. In the spirit of gotta go fast, I just used some boning out of my stash in order to install the channels. And I'm putting this in between the panels, so at the center of the panels, rather than over each seam, as just in case I needed to actually mess with the seams, I wanted to leave those open to actually being messed with. But it fit okay. It was definitely better than my first one, at least. Once I had the channels themselves installed, I just threw some random lengths of boning in there. Most of them are pieces that I salvaged from failed attempts at corsets in the past, or from one particular unfortunate corset that was nearby on the floor when one of my roommates made the toilet flood. With the vertical support in this mock-up, I got a better idea of exactly how much I needed to make this corset longer, as it was drafted on my dress form, which isn't quite my shape, I'm quite long-waisted. However, at this point, my corset pattern, how it needed to be, was so far removed from how far the corset pattern was originally that I needed to actually take this and put it on a different piece of paper. A much more aesthetic piece of paper, as this one is actually made of, like, brown paper, rather than being the wrong side of some wrapping paper that I used for Christmas gifts. I had to add about half an inch to the bottom of the corset all the way around, and between an inch and two inches to the corset, depending on where on the corset, as the back was very low and the bust was a little bit low, but not as low as the back. So I had a fun time marking all of that and then judging how it was. I also edited the pattern itself on panel number three to make it so that my belly would flare out a little bit less and add more to the side, as that was a little bit more flattering. I 
I cut out the new structural layer of the corset, and again, just with that home decor cotton that worked for me the first time. And then I cut out another set of these, but out of a quilting cotton that I got at the thrift store for, I think, $1.50 for half a bolt of fabric. Unlike the inner layer, you'll notice on the outer layer that I'm actually leaving quite a bit of room around my pattern pieces because I need to leave room for me to insert the cording. The cording has a little bit of a bumping effect and I knew from that bumping I would need to add a little bit more room in my front panels, which were going to take the brunt of that as the inner lining was not as flexible. My biggest experiment with this project was figuring out how to actually do those pointy cording layers as it's not something I'd ever done before and some of them were in the bosque and lacing panels which means that the busk had to be installed before the cording, whereas usually you install any cording before you actually put the corset together so that it's not pressing up against anything. Eventually I figured out that I had to install the busk properly, including going all the way around it with a zipper foot because I couldn't put the busk in after putting the cording in, or else I wouldn't have room to actually put the busk in because you can't turn it inside out once the cording's in. Then you put in your, your first row that you press your cording against and just keep on going with that and shove the cording into the corner and just kind of hope that it's in there far enough that you'll be able to actually get tension out of it. This mock-up is also where I really started to actually experiment with the historical techniques that I was going on about before. Historical bit number one, I did not use very many steel bones in this corset. I primarily used synthetic whalebone, which is designed to imitate natural whalebone as used during the Victorian era. Synthetic baleen is very lightweight and flexible, but it doesn't buckle like feather light boning. And like historical baleen, it can be molded to the user's shape of their body through the heat and moisture that comes from wearing the corset or from the use of something like a steam iron, which is available in almost every household nowadays. In addition to the synthetic whalebone, I also wanted to incorporate the use of cording. Depending on the use of the corset and the age of the wearer, corsets could be boned almost entirely in rows of cording. It was very, very prevalent all throughout the Victorian era. Most particularly, I wanted to experiment with having the sort of chevron pointed cording panels around the bust that I see very prevalently in extant garments that we still have remaining to us today from manufacturers like Symington and other extant garments, as well as using a similar chevron design at the center back in order to reinforce those panels and the actual vertical cording channels, generally in groups of three, that you see in extant corsets that are designed for more lightweight use. In the end, every panel of my five panel pattern corset has some amount of cording in it. The front two have the sort of chevron pointy cording 
panels that I was talking about earlier, the next two have vertical support, sort of boning-like stiffener channels, and the very back has some more almost chevron-like designs that are intended to give a little bit of structure to where it flares out in order to support the shape of the hips that I don't know if they genuinely work, but they look cool. Once I had my cording in, I trimmed all of my pattern pieces down to the actual size that they were supposed to be, but that I had left open to put the cording in. Aside from the back lacing assembly, I pretty much assembled this corset once the cording was in as normal, as in I put the cording in and then I sewed all the pieces together with the seam allowance facing out so that I could put boning channels over top of it and end up with a really nicely finished garment where the boning channels aren't up against the skin. For this mock-up, I actually put in two-part eyelets instead of just using eyelet tape like I had for my first mock-up because I wanted to see how the boning at the center back would perform. The answer was poorly with the synthetic whalebone. I have an extremely curved sway back which has collapsed many a plastic bone and the only thing that really works is to put two flat steels around it so that it doesn't just turn into weird wrinkles at the small of my back. This time I'm putting my boning channels over the seam allowances again to create that really neat finished effect and realized that my boning channels were a little out of sync. I have fixed that in my final version of the pattern pieces. 
You might also notice that I used two different colors of boning channels with this corset. It doesn't mean anything, I just ran out. That's all. With the channels installed, I could measure and cut the bones, and I'm just mostly eyeballing it here to generally what I think these bones should have been like. Generally, you want to leave a little bit of space at the top and bottom of your bone. Number one, so that you don't run over it when you're binding the top and bottom of the corset, and number two, so that you can put flossing in there and actually create tension on your bones that'll keep the corset behaving very nicely when you wear it. With the lacing put in, I now have a entire corset mock-up. It doesn't quite fit, but I do know what to fix and where to make a corset that does fit. And my mock-up has served its purpose, so I will be harvesting the busk and the back lacing bits and probably the other bones out of it. In the end, my biggest qualm is that my cotton cording at the bust is too far down and I need to raise it so it will actually lift the bust instead of just sitting weirdly at my rib cage, and also that I need to add a bone at the center of panel number three, as it doesn't quite support the shape enough and ends up collapsing the piping that I put in. But it's definitely good enough that I feel comfortable starting on the finished garment now, and I hope you stick around to enjoy that. Like this video if you liked this video. If you would like to see more of my future projects, consider hitting that subscribe button and possibly the notification bell if you wish to be notified, because subscribing does not automatically notify you for mystery YouTube reasons. Also consider joining my Discord board, which is linked below. It's not just historical costuming related, it's all sorts of artwork from 3D modeling to conventional drawing to prop making. It's all just a bunch of artists giving each other love, so it might be for you. Sometimes I ask for opinions on fabric choices and things like that. Sometimes I ask for ideas for future videos. Sometimes I just go on and on about She-Ra, because I'm still on about She-Ra. But even then, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again real soon.